Welcome to the Health Made Easy podcast. Health advice so easy, you'll feel more confident about your body, health, and life. And now, your host, Dr. Connie Jean. This is Dr. Connie. Today we're going to be doing Q&A Fridays on my Facebook Lupus Rebel group. And so I'm going to be reading off the questions that I've gotten. So those of you who don't know what this is, I invite you to do my private Facebook group, Lupus Rebel. That's where we ask a lot of personal questions and I'm in there quite a bit trying to help you to navigate your life with lupus. So first question comes from Melody Lyons. She asks, what natural solutions do you employ when you flare? I'm not on any meds because I don't believe the benefits outweigh the risks for me at this point. I eat an anti-inflammatory diet and supplement. Have you found anything specific that calms the immune response that isn't a medication? So there's many natural solutions for flares, right? So flares can manifest differently for lupus patients. So... From severe fatigue, pain, to organ involvement, it's just different for many of you. So I suspect that if you're not on any medications, that means probably your lupus isn't flaring that bad or lupus is very minor in your life, which is a good thing. So for you, um, I would continue with the anti-inflammatory diet. But here's my takeaway with the diets, right? There's a lot of anti-inflammatory diet, and so it really depends on what you're following because some ketogenic camp people would say ketogenic diet is the anti-inflammatory way. Autoimmune uh, protocol people would say autoimmune protocol. Um, There is... um, the Mediterranean diet, and then of course the paleo, and then the plant-based diet movement is all big. And many of you have shared from the plant-based world and accused me of eating meat and how bad that is and really defending your idea. So I want to be clear that this is not so much about defending anybody's camp so much because I think everything is relevant. Because let me just tell you, at the onset of my lupus, my traditional Chinese medical doctor told me I needed to eat meat and I was heavily plant-based. I was a vegan at the time. Got really sick, incorporated meat in moderation and today look where I am. So I think you should always ask uh, the question of is that person giving you the advice is a good model for who who you should follow and always remember that a man's one man's medicine might be another man's poison. So keep that to heart and make sure you keep that in mind when you think about these various diets. I do believe that there are supplements that you can take, two of them being fish oil, therapeutic dosage of it, which is um, probably about two to three grams. It's a significant amount of good quality fish oil um, with a good ratio of omega-3 and omega-6 is key. And that's going to help you to decrease your um, inflammation in your body, as well as I've seen great effects here in my clinic when I incorporate that fish oil uh, with curcumin. I use a specific proprietary blend, but I always couple it with probiotics to make sure that they have a good microbiome in their gut to ensure that they've got a good uh, environment in there to digest and absorb. So I hope that that makes sense. So next question is, comes from Cindy Lewis. Hi, Cindy. I hope you're doing better. I know you've had some difficulties in the recent past. So she asks, having difficulty with hands, opening and closing, I do have RA, but this is new. It's painful and hands feels very tight. Can't take Motrin due to stomach upset. Do you recommend gloves or splinting or any medications? So I think, Cindy, even though this is new um, and you do know that you had RA, I think this RA might be, uh, this, uh, this pain that you're having in your joints are uh, due to RA flare, RA being rheumatoid arthritis. Um, I don't advocate anything that's splinting or any types of gloves because that doesn't really help anyways because the RAs are, the antibody starts to destroy the synovial uh, matrix of your joints, especially in your finger joints. 
And because these are necessary for fine motor activity, which is pretty much everything that we do, that um, you work on kind of decreasing the inflammation to keep the RA under control. Now, if the anti-inflammatory is too strong for your gut lining, again, that goes back to gut restoration. So go back to the, the um, first question that I answered um, um, from Melody. Um, to make sure that you restore your gut to make sure you're able to handle some of the supplements or any of the foods so that you're absorbing all the micronutrients that you need. I will tell you that um, effective uh, fish oil in therapeutic dosages, right, a very good quality fish oil, probably therapeutic dosage being about 3 grams. That's 3,000 milligrams, right? It's a lot more than what you would think. I do place my patients on very high dosages of fish oil coupled with curcumin. Curcuplex is something that I use, and I do sell it on my lupus pharmacy. Those of you who are interested, you can ask me. Otherwise, you can get a good source. Hopefully, you'll get the good source of curcumins and the likes, and that's helped to significantly reduce the load of um, inflammation in your hands. Um, so not just in your hands, but all over. I will tell you that I've recently looked into the CBD oils and I found a good source and I've been in touch with them, the manufacturer. They won't sell it, Amazon doesn't sell it. It's heavily monitored and I have the therapeutic grade CBD oils. They are costly though, um, but if you're interested, I can work something out to where I can get them for you. Um, I'll try to work out a discount where I can offer that to you through my store, but they advise I, I would have to be a provider vendor and then have that available on my site. So that's something I'm thinking about doing, but um, that won't be anytime soon. But if, with the proper urges from you guys, um, it may be sooner than later. So I hope that that helps. Um, next question is, what happens if you stop your lupus meds? Um, not intentionally, but due to no insurance, by Carla Teresa. So Carla, I think if you can't get uh, you know, insurance, that would mean that you may qualify for Medicaid or even Medicare if you're on disability. So I would make sure that you get some type of uh, insurance plan because when things go south, you're going to need the medical doctor. And lupus is something that a rheumatologist really needs to be monitoring your disease progress. Despite how much we want to go holistic, that's something we can certainly do. That's our part, right? But when we get sick, we want to make sure that we have um, enough assurance in knowing that we can be admitted into the hospital, for example. There's some, certain things holistic intervention is not so good at. When it's acute and it's an emergency situation, we need the doctors, those amazing doctors at the hospital to, to make sure we, they keep us um, under control or lupus under control. So, um, and also, stopping all meds is not advisable. Even if you were to sign up with my plan, I don't advise my patients to stop their meds. Rather, we sort of work on your symptomologies and make sure that we document and measure certain biomarkers to where we feel good about dosing down. And that's another conversation we need to involve your rheumatologist. So I'm not an advocate of irresponsible medical handling in any way. This is all safe and tried methods to do so. This is what I've done with open communication with my doctors. So um, I don't advise you to go AWOL like that. Um, so please, please figure out how you can um, get yourself insured somehow, okay? The next one is comes from Cynthia Hildreth. Hi, Cynthia. Um, she asks a very good question. I hear people say they gain weight when they have lupus. So why do people lose weight with lupus? First and foremost, um, lupus is an inflammatory disease. So when you have inflammation in your body, a lot of the times what happens is um, it's not so much the amount of food sometimes, it's you have a tendency to retain water, right? Um, so that uh, some people fluctuate weight, you know, easily five to 10 pounds in a given day you know, from morning to night. And that's because 
the toxins like to be in our interstitial space in our system and they particularly like our fat cells and when they reside there it's very hard to pull out and metabolize to get rid of outside of our body and so that's what causes the weight gain not to mention the fact that when you're on prednisone it really does improve your appetite so then you keep eating the bad stuff you know, typically it's the bad stuff because it's almost like you're on high and so you want the sweets, you want to feed your body. But on the flip side, the reason why some of us lose weight is because with the inflammation, it sort of uh, causes a catabolic activity in our body, contrary to more of the inflammatory, like sort of holding on to the liquid. For some of us, it starts to break down lean muscle tissue. And for some of us, it causes nausea, a lot of the vomiting, and so it's hard to eat. So the loss of appetite is a big thing, despite the prednisone. So for me, even with the prednisone, it didn't make me eat more. It totally took my appetite away. That goes to show, again, genetic variability in individuals, and it manifests a little bit differently. So I always like to look at it from a standpoint of mitochondria, you know, your genetic makeup, and then, of course, the gut dysbiosis with the microbiome, the probiotics, the friendly bacteria in our system, along with the whole balance of it all, right? And then the environment, the stressors in your life. These are things that we can modulate. So anyway, that's the reason why some of us lose weight and some, they gain weight. So we can work with either. So anyway, I hope that clears up everything. Um, next question comes from, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to bastardize your name. Thuyen Ben is her name. Um, she asks, has anyone with SLE been also diagnosed with androgenetic alopecia? If so, has anything worked for you? I'm currently on spir spironolactone, 25 milligrams for two months now, and I'm not seeing any improvement. I tried di um, Nioxin shampoo, and at first my hair became thicker, but now it's so thin. So, so first of all, what is androgenetic alopecia? Androgenetic alopecia is something typically seen in males that have balding in their head. So androgenic, androgen meaning male hormones, right? That implies a little bit of a hormonal um, effect to our system. But when it says androgenetic, there's a genetic component. So unfortunately, if you're genetically disposed, there's not much you can do about it short of taking some supplements that I recommend. Um, I do have supplements that I truly has done the reverse for me. That's why I only have a handful of them. So I do hope that you guys take it to heart to, to know what I offer. But also too, um, if a woman is affected by this alopecia, um, then it just means that um, you're gonna have a lot of thinning up on the top. And usually you'll see it like at the crown of the head. Um, and that's something like people without lupus will get. But I suspect if you have lupus and you have alopecia, sort of like me, I used to have bald spots in this specific area with all around thinning in my hair. I would never be able to keep it as long as it is. Somebody accused me of having extensions in one of the YouTube video channels. And I, to me, that's like so such a, um, such a compliment because, I mean, I wish I can handle the, um, the extensions, but putting extensions in will um, pull out the hair follicles. It's not something I advocate. But anyway, healing your gut will allow you to take in the micronutrients, right? And then as those, um, that as those factors really restore your mitochondria at this molecular level, it starts to work away and begins to regenerate. And regeneration is health and vitality with the decreased inflammation. All these things to say that your, life, your body will now start to regenerate the things that it needs, like my nails, your hair. These are secondary things. When the body's under fire, it's the first thing that it's going to get let go of. So survival is at its peak, right? So it's going to be busy creating a situation within biochemically to make sure you stay alive. That means it's not going to pay attention to the hair follicles. 
And so once everything is calmed down and you're able to be micronutriently well off, then your body will start to pay attention and start to regenerate the beauty cells, the collagens. And also something to note is that um, hair loss has something to do with the hormones. This hormone mix, not just the androgynous and sexual hormones like testosterone, progesterone, and estrogen, but there is the DHEA component, there is the thyroid, the adrenals, the cortisol. These are all hormone pools that does and get affected by our gut microbiota. So if that's not sufficient and you've got an imbalance in the hormone system, then that's going to cause this to fall out as well. So this is something that is tried and true and I'm speaking from the physiological standpoint. So work on healing your gut and it does grow back. And I was so surprised that my bald spot over here, I mean, I literally had a bald spot. I went and got me a wig. I thought I was going to go bald and everything grew back and then some. But am I paranoid about weight, um, the hair loss? I absolutely am. So I still do use, as a pro prophylaxis, I still do use biotin, or I'm sorry, nioxin, just a spray, because I feel like these areas are thinning. And of course, my bald spot in the past, where this used to be very bald, like it was very big. And that's where I would just spray. And to be honest with you, I don't know if it's helpful or not, but psychologically, the placebo effect, call it what you, whatever you want, um, it's working for me. So that along with my beauty supplements that I offer at Lupus Pharmacy is what I personally use. You can do your own thing and research. There's a lot of research to validate the bi biotins out there. Um, and some collagens that you can take as a powder. Bone broths are good. There's so many different options, you guys. But first and foremost, heal your gut so you can absorb the nutrients, balance your homeostasis within the body, restore at the cellular level, and all is good. What lupus, right? So that's the goal here. So I hope all these questions helped. For those of you newbies, please ask away. Chris will be putting up another post with the feed for next Friday's Q&A. So I'll talk to you guys later. And if you, you can find me at um, on my podcast, ConnieGion.com forward slash podcast forward slash. That's where I have podcasts now. All this would be uploaded. Please subscribe. That helps a ton. Subscribe to my YouTube channel as well as subscribe to our newsletter and join our Facebook group, Lupus Rebel. Thanks so much. I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Health Made Easy podcast, www.drconnyjean.com.